This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And today he's heading to a galaxy far, far away to look at the weapons of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Ah, the E11 blaster rifle. It was the blaster that I wanted as a kid, and here is one. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to video game firearms, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comments section below. If you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Guys like us? Okay, pause there. Right, well I would say the iconic DL-44, iconic for its use by Han Solo, which it clearly wasn't meant to be in any way unique to him in the original movies. Luke famously, well not famously, but obviously carries one as well. It isn't unique to him in the Star Wars universe. It is unique to him in Battlefront 2, I believe. Um, it is of course a Mauser C96, an MG81 machine gun muzzle booster stuck to a big chunky uh, barrel and a scope mount stuck to the side. One more thing <laughs> that's occurred to me is um, the shooting position that he uses both in the movies and in games is that hyper exaggerated James Bond one handed shooting hand out to the side pose. Now this this was um, common in the 70s and 80s. It was actually taught by people like the FBI for revolver shooting, which was all about balance. You were supposed to lower your center of gravity, lean forward, throw your throw your support, what would be your support arm out for balance. Look where you're shooting, not bother about looking down the side. I, I always love um, reflections of the, of the real world in my fiction. And I thought that's an interesting one to point out. Right, another heavily disguised weapon. And this, so this is the A180 sniper. As you can probably see from the, from the model if you haven't played the game before or seen the film Rogue One, if you haven't, you should. There is in fact a Luger P08 pistol embedded somewhere in this sniper rifle. Now in, in the Star Wars universe, we can stick along a barrel and a stock on something and turn it into a sniper rifle. In the real world, can't really do that. Uh, so I, I remember distinctly from, from, the, from Rogue One, um, Jin Erso, what, what immediately popped into my head when I saw that scene was it's a space Luger with enough sort of built up parts on it to make it look distinctly different. The sniper rifle version we, that we're seeing in the game here, well, the, the most notable thing, apart from it being made out of a Luger, is the slightly comedy telescopic barrel, a way to keep this sort of hybrid weapon compact, I suppose. Um, in the real world, we have various ways to do that. Uh, takedown rifles is probably how we, we, we make a takedown version. So the barrel comes off, maybe the stock comes off as well. But instead they went for something visually interesting and we pull the barrel out to extend it. And that wouldn't work with a conventional firearm, obviously, because you can't telescope barrels into themselves because only one section is going to be of the right diameter for the bullet. For a blaster, who knows? Although there is an important safety tip from the, um, the animation in the game where the character extends the barrel. They've just done what I've done with an unloaded and cleared Luger, I hasten to add, but that's a live firearm. They pull out the barrel with their hand over the muzzle. So I hope they have good tr uh, trigger discipline in the Star Wars universe because you do not want to shoot a hole through your hand. The, the T21, uh, usually called a heavy blaster, I think. And it's pretty obviously a Lewis light machine gun of the uh, First World War period, which I have here, <laughs> which is extremely heavy. I've got it because I want to show you the, really the only modification that they made for the film and, and carried through to the games. All that's happening is the pan magazine that's normally used, well, always used with the Lewis gun, otherwise you haven't got any bullets, is just taken off and thrown away. And as you can see from the, the in-game model, it's a pretty faithful replica of what's under the Lewis gun magazine, including parts of the mechanism that are specifically for cartridges. 
that don't exist in the Star Wars universe, or at least not anymore. So you've got, w w when you know the guns and you're looking at them, you think, oh, well, what does that feature do in this reality? Because <laughs> in real reality, it's all about feeding cartridges into a gun. I have, I do remember from screenshots from the movie, little details like modifications that were made during the First World War. This device here, which you see in, certainly in the movie, this is an oil bottle so that the gunner would always have an oil bottle to hand. Who knows what that does in the Star Wars universe. <laughs>Ah, the E11 blaster rifle. For me, this this is the Star Wars gun. It's the Stormtrooper standard issue weapon, of course, and our heroes in the original trilogy get their hands on them pretty early on and use them for quite a lot of that film. It was the blaster that I wanted as a kid, and here is one, well, sort of. This is the Canadian C1 version of the Sterling submachine gun. And I'm showing you this because it's the version that we see in Battlefront 2. The, the actual guns used in Return of the Jedi, because that's the version that's being replicated here, were Japanese model guns, so uh, toys, effectively, replicas. And they were what was readily available and legally convenient, so those were what were dressed up as E-11s for Return of the Jedi. And I suppose the, the only other thing I'd, I'd just mention is a bit on the, um, the prop design of the original gun, because we're, we're fortunate enough to have one of the original E-11s from the original Star Wars movies. And the components that have been put on there are uh, mostly original components, with one notable exception, which is the um, machine copier counter box that sits on the side of ours. These are over in the museum, so I can't show them to you, but come and see us. Uh, that box there was added by Lucasfilm because our two guns, our Rebel Blaster and our Imperial Blaster, were loaned by, by Bacti, um, who created them, where they were rebuilt and they were loaned back to Lucasfilm for reference to develop the F-11D for the First Order. So what did they do briefly? Um, they, they stuck stuff to it. They stuck a strip of metal into the, the cooling hole here and then attached it to the rear sight and clamped a Sherman tank optical, optical sight to that. They uh, put draw runners, uh, hardware store draw runners um, from b and I, I gather, for um, our UK viewers. Stuck those into the cooling holes, that disguises the cooling holes. And the other key thing, to stop it looking like a 1950s submachine gun with this curved 34 round magazine sticking out the side, was a short magazine. For the C1, there was in fact, for the Canadian C1, there was in fact a short magazine made. So it already looks a bit like a, an E11. Very interesting when we move to the First Order F11D, uh, which we saw there as well, the black and white one. In that, and I don't think you see this in the movies, but I've seen it on the real props that I've seen. They redesigned this as sort of part of the receiver of the gun, the, the, the stock. And then what should be the shoulder stock is a foregrip that you can flip down like this, and out of the front pops a little flashlight. I thought that was a really neat piece of design, albeit, a little bit dangerous because you might blast your fingers off and so that's that's the evolution of the e11 this is an interesting change of pace the cycler rifle this is introduced in the star wars movies as a sort of sci-fi fantasy parallel of what it's based on, <laughs> which is um, Afghan Jazail, the sort of Middle East, North Africa, part of the world where in the 19th century, the British army with relatively advanced small arms ran into tribesmen in the hills using traditionally made muzzle-loading rifles called the, called the Jazail. And that's what the the, the, the the sand people being a parallel to sort of nomadic human peoples who are maybe not technologically hugely sophisticated, but know their environment, know their territory and are able to fight more sophisticated, more numerous enemies and come out on top. And so that, that weapon, which is the only projectile weapon possibly in the whole of the Star Wars canon, although I'm sure someone will correct me there, but um, certainly in the game, that, that's an interesting historical Earth parallel to what we see in the Star Wars universe with the cycler rifles in, in the various forms of Star Wars media adds some much needed variety to the roster of laser guns in the game.
that's um, what we've seen there is a fairly non-traditional weapon for Star Wars. What, what it is, mostly an M60 machine gun, which, which fits the, tr the Star Wars tradition of modifying real world guns to turn them into some sci-fi fantasy blaster that, that fits. Um, so I, I, I must admit, I initially thought that this was a video game only weapon, but um, as is often the case, it's based on something from elsewhere in the franchise. And uh, in this case, it, it, it's, it fits very well for, for what the real gun is. The M60 was and is often to be found as a helicopter door gun. And we see it in Rogue One in that role. That's clearly what it was conceived for, for that movie. Here, of course, we're using it in the ground role. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice bit of um, original trilogy design work that, that, albeit it pushes the timeline slightly further forwards, but not by much. Be careful around that scavenger. The resistance have captured position north. Um, now this is, this is a weapon that I've not seen before, because I, to my shame, I've never seen the Clone Wars series where it apparently first appeared. Um, so the IQA-11 is a Clone Wars era sniper rifle, and it is, um, from, from the first person view, very reminiscent of the Accuracy International PM or L96A1 sniper rifle from our reality. But actually, if you look at the, the 3D model, it's quite different. It's got a different design of thumb hole stock. The, the whole silhouette is actually quite different. And I think that's because it, if it's originally designed for an animated series that has quite simple uh, shapes going on, then they're not going to stick too closely to the realistic look of the gun. Whereas your typical Star Wars gun is a real gun covered in stuff, as we've established. So it's as filtered through the medium of animation and then appearing in the realistic themed Battlefront 2 game where it looks more like a real gun, sort of, but it still has the heritage of having been designed as a, as a piece of concept art. So it's, a, it's an odd one out in, in those respects, I think. So we also saw um, the sort of handheld, I think it's meant to be an ion weapon, a stun gun, a shock blaster, famously used by the Jawas to incapacitate anything, I suppose. And um, that was a really obvious bit of movie gun casting because you could you could readily see that this was a, um, a short magazine Lee Enfield with the stock partly cut down and the barrel cut down. And then with the First World War vintage designed grenade launcher cup fitted to the end of the barrel to create a radically different look but it's still very obviously a bolt action rifle now this is not the jawa um shock blaster but it's very similar it's also a cut down smle rifle and then we've got this recoil hook at the front for hooking over something. And I suspect that something is the side of an armored vehicle um, because this is this is a uh, smoke grenade launcher. And anything that's large and heavy like that, that you're firing out of something relatively small and light has a lot of recoil. So perhaps the uh, makers of The Mandalorian are watching this and would like a new weapon to feature in the series. Uh, feel free to steal this design. We are a museum, as you know, the Royal Armouries. Um, if you'd like to, to donate, absolutely no pressure to do so, but there are links in the description also for our membership scheme. I have a, a book out at the moment on British ballpup firearms. You might like to check that out. We've also started doing a series of short videos on our own YouTube, YouTube channel at the Royal Armouries, the first one of which anyway, complements what we're doing here with the guys at GameSpot. So feel free to check out our YouTube channel as well. Thanks very much.